Whether it's to build a passive income or to escape the nine to five rat race, more and more people across the UK are turning to property investing and development as a way of making money work for them, not for them working for money. It sounds easy, but property is not a game for the faint-hearted, with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake. The rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very, very wrong. You often need financial experience and knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where we come in. In this series, we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals. John Howard, Helen Chorley, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Woolwork and Ranjan Bhattacharya, or who we call our property investment angels. Our contestants are in with the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who will bring both finance and experience to the deal. Will our angels be sending them up to the penthouse or will they be heading straight for the basement? I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you're watching Property Elevator. Welcome back to Property Elevator here in sunny Hertfordshire. The standard of deals so far has been incredible and we are so excited to see what happens in today's episode. Ranjan, I don't care how much light it's got, but I'm telling you now, I've done, I've done lots of basements and they are a challenge. If it can be done in six months, it's a very different proposition to if it can be done in a year because of what we're expecting. I think one of the things about permitted development is there's a lot you can do, but because there's a question is how much of it should you do? And what if you don't get planning? Where, where's that money gone then? But it, it does seem a bit light, especially for the second floor creation. It looks about half of what it's going to cost. Okay, so Nemi, welcome to Property Elevator. It's Thank lovely you. to have a fellow lady. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a mother of three, I'm married. I work in the airline industry, so you can okay. imagine how I feel at this point in time. Um, as an IT manager, I'm here to try and raise some money to go full time into property development. So what are you after today from the Angels? I'm after 75% of the property value, mm -hmm. um, the money to extend and develop the property, mm -hmm and uh, mentorship, advice, and I'm happy to give them a good chunk of the profits that I make out of it. Great, in exchange for the experience, Correct. I guess, as well. Yes. Lovely, well, best of luck. Thank I've got you. my fingers crossed for you. I think you're about to head in now. Okay. All right. So we have Remy coming in uh, shortly, and she's agreed to buy a property in Ilkeston in Derbyshire. Looks like there's quite a lot to do. Um, it will come under the new PD rights, won't it? But let's, uh, shall we get her in and see what she has to say about it? Hello, how Hello, are you? I'm good, morning, good. afternoon. <laughs> Not sure where we are. <laughs> I know. No window, hardly any windows. <laughs> okay. Nemi, thank you very much for coming in today and making the effort. Can you, first of all, tell us a bit about yourself and then a bit about the deal that you wish us to fund, please? Okay, I'm Nemi. Um, married, mother of three teenage children. Um, I work in the airline industry, have been for the last 22 years as an IT project manager. Um, but with COVID, uh, you can imagine what's going on yeah, in the airline gosh, industry yeah. is dire. And during the lockdown, I did catch COVID-19. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, so while, while I was on there, um, flicking through my email, and I saw this um, email from Barnard Marcus. Um, some unsold lots from uh, auction just happened in April. And I looked and I saw this property. I said, wow, £96,000 for a, a huge building. And I said, I should, you know, look into it. And so I told my husband and he laughed me off. Bank holiday Monday, he woke me up and said, let's go and have a look at this property. I said, but they, we are locked down. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> and he says, no, we say that we're going for work. And so we hit the motorway and we went and there was not a soul. There was no one on the motorway, there was no one on the streets. And we got there and we peeked through because they wouldn't let us go inside. So we peeked through and said, oh, not so bad. It, it looked better in real life than it did in the auction uh, paperwork. I said, yes, I'm going to buy it. But I didn't have a, I didn't have a dime. <laughs> 
So a couple of my friends, I, I told them about it and I managed to raise 30,000 pounds. And we pulled together money between my, me and my husband and we got 20,000 pounds and I called my broker and she says, no one's lending, everyone is afraid of what's going on. And then I, I went on Ranjan's channel and I saw him interview somebody, um, Akhil, and he's, a, he's called our mortgage broker. So I said, okay, I'll give him a call. I said, Akhil, can I get a bridge and loan or any sort of lending? And he says, yes, um, but it's going to be 50% down or 60% down. Um, I said, yeah, let's go for it. And I said, do you have a solicitor? Yes, I've got one. I said, OK, I called the auction house and they, they weren't taking me seriously. And I put in an offer and they said, no, we want 95. And I put in an offer of 95 and no, we want 90, we want 100. I said, OK, I put in a final offer, 96,500 and they accepted. And I said, OK, I need eight weeks. I can't do it in four weeks because of lockdown. And um, we did it. We bought the property. Oh, well done. And um, went down there to have a look after lockdown was lifted. And I fell in love with the area. I like, you know, River Trent, Derbyshire, mining, you know, black country. And I just saw everywhere I looked, there were so many opportunities. I spoke to Esther agents and they said, look, there is a huge, there's a lack of rental property, especially one bedroom properties um, for people you know growing out of home and wanting to move out on their own and um, I just walking around the high street and I saw this and I inquired and um, here I am <laughs> did you get a haircut no I was no. a gentleman's one <laughs> sorry I just thought it was a gentleman's one I apologize they, weeks, otherwise I they, they do a good, good haircut you know we'd have to cut that so into the deal so well done, because that's, that, takes, that takes some balls. What you do, you've demonstrated already to us that you've got some balls and, and, and you're up and at it, which is great. I noticed you didn't take your three teenage children up with you. Well, well that would have been a long trip, <laughs> I should think, with three teenagers in a car all the way to Derbyshire and back. I know, it's two and a half hours from yeah. where I live. Um, but we're all going down next week, Saturday, yep. to the property I bought, the other one I bought, to do some de de demolition work. Right. And I promised them I'll get them overalls and Quite goggles. Well done. And <laughs> well, get them working. Fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Hands okay. on. No such thing as passive. Huh? Absolutely. Well, where would we like to start? Do you want to just tell us what you, what you want to do with the actual building? So this building is a, a barber shop at the bottom and the first floor is uh, offices. And um, speaking to the ESNA agent, they did say that it's a, it's, a main high, it's a main high street and it used to be bustling. But over the years, with IKEA um, opening about t uh, 20 minutes down the road and a huge Tesco, it's sort of taken out the heart of the, of the high street. So the government and the council are pumping money into the area. Um, on that same street, there's, there used to be a pub down the end of that road. And I spoke to the um, developer. He's got planning permission to put 21 units on there. And there's so much going on there. So I saw this and I said, this is very nice because it's right at the corner. It's two stories high. Um, the tenant who, who has a lease that's extending to next year wants to rent the two bedroom flat. And he said to me, he'll offer me 680. I haven't negotiated with him. I'm going to most likely ask for 700. Um, he currently pays 650 for the bottom. Um, I'm going to ask to renegotiate a new contract for both of the units, so they start at the same time. And he, he definitely wants to remain. And there's room at the back to extend, and there's an entire floor, or the second floor, where I can build up. So I've spoken to uh, an architect who gave me a mobile number to the planning officer. So I've had a nice chat with the planning officer, and they're quite happy with it. And she's actually said, when you've done the drawings, give it to me to have a look first before you submit it. Um, so I know uh, that, you know, with a, as it being a commercial unit, uh, they've permitted development rights available to extract yeah. a lot of value out of it. And that's what I'm aiming to do. So it's a really thorough pack that you've given us. I really like how so it's... like that. Yeah, I, I really do. It's really <laughs> nicely presented. I work with a lot of developers in, in doing the, exactly this, how to present deals to investors, kind of making it clear, giving us some colour about the deal, but also about yourself. So lots of information in there. That's great. I just, I wasn't clear on a couple of things. So if I could ask you about that, that would be great. So the total GDV, so what you think 
think everything all together is worth at the end, you're expecting 385. Correct. Is that right? Okay, great. And the total costs is what I was a little confused about because you have split it out on the game. That's lovely that for the for each of the, the bits of work that you want to do. But what's your total cost you're expecting? What to to do the work? Yes. So I'm looking at seventy thousand pounds altogether, um, which would be because the, the ground floor is quite extensive and it has two offices at the back. Uh, Barbers doesn't, he doesn't use all that space. So it's just wasted space. Right. So I'm going to shave off from there, move the staircase to the side. Yeah. So there's clear access for the first floor. Uh, independent, and the second floor. Uh, independent access. Independent access. And there's a back entrance and a side entrance. Okay. and to the property. Um, so I'm just going to extend it in the ground floor a little bit to make a one bedroom apartment right? with a courtyard. And then the second floor has two offices, like a breakout area, a kitchenette and a separate toilet and shower. So the two offices will just be the two bedrooms. It's quite clear what's going to happen there. The breakout area would be the living space and I'll, ex and I'll just open it up a little bit to have the kitchen and then a separate shower and bath uh, toilet. Right, okay. So your total build costs are 70 and your purchase price was 129. Correct. Okay. And so are there additional costs that need to go in there? But I'm, I'm trying to work out your, your total costs. So obviously you've got 200K there. So I'll be bringing the deposit to purchase it, okay. as well as all the legal costs to acquire it. Right, okay. okay. Um, so yeah. so how, much deposit, how much deposit are you putting in? 25% plus the legal costs altogether adds up to about £38,000. So you're putting in 38k. yeah. Yeah, about £39,000. That's great to see you've got some skin in the game, so that's, yep. that's super. What are you looking for from, from an investor today, exactly? I'm looking for a, a mentor. I'm also looking for money to do the works, bring the 75% to purchase it and to do the works. Okay. Yeah. And I mean because my intention is, this is just a start, I'm looking to do proper development work because I've been a buy to let landlord for many years, but I'd like to really get into the development work and that's, what, that's my so big game. So I don't start. have to depend on yeah. my salary. It's a nice size to start with. It's not too, <laughs> too tricky and a good way to get your and in the game, so to speak. GDV, that's based on not, not adding another floor. It's, it it's, is. It is based on adding the other floor. It is, yeah. And the two bedroom flat is, would be over the first and second floors. Correct. Is it? So th there'll be one two bedroom flat on the first floor and another Exist one. Existing. Yes, it's existing, yeah. And offices. then you're putting another floor on top. On top of it, yes. Okay, and how much have we got in for that? The entire building is 120, 1,200 square foot. So I assume that the first floor is 600. Very important that you know the square footage of each of each flat, each prop, each bit of the. Really important because from there you can work out the cost of the work and you can work out obviously what they're worth as well. Yeah, I estimate that to be about 600 square foot. What's the uh, exit plan? By the time the second floor is up on there with the ground floor extension, the property is 75% residential. So I should be able to get a buy-to-let mortgage on that and not a commercial mortgage. Are you saying that you want a angel to come in, fund the rest of the purchase with you, share in the, the profit with you of the rental income when it's all finished? Uh, my, my initial thoughts um, was to pay back your investment as well as a huge part of the profit. Thank you very much. I like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think you're worth it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, the rental income is really positive. Um, so I'm hoping to get um, seven, seven, 700 pounds a month from each of the floors, yep. excluding the extension, the one bedroom. That's yep. about 500 uh, pounds so a month, so yeah. Yep. So you would be paying investor funds back from the refinance. That's yes, your plan. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, but I'm open to any other ideas you've got. A couple of questions. Um, where has the build cost come from? I've got a builder who's gone round to have a look, and I also spoke to the project manager um, who's doing the 21 unit down the road, and got a few ideas from him as to how much it will cost. And labour is cheaper up there. Mm -hmm. than it is in London, because yeah, the cheaper. property that we already own, um, 
the roof, the uh, guttering needs doing, and I thought it would cost maybe a thousand pounds. And I got a quote for um, uh, 190 pounds. And I, I didn't want to laugh or anything, but I was like, how can it cost so little? So the, the labour costs are quite low over there. Now, you guys might be able to pitch in on this, but it, it does seem a bit light, especially for the second floor creation. It looks about half of what it's going to cost. I do think it's okay. Y yeah? I think it's 600 pretty. square feet. Um, I mean, this is just going to be a, 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 like doing a loft, quite frankly. Right. A little bit of timber and all of that. I, I don't think it's... I love that. W I love the way you say, Ranjan. <laughs> it's Obviously a bit of timber. building regs and all it's of that. Of but, you know. One, first of all, I think you'll find it's still framed. That's the first thing. If you read, read what's in there, that's the first thing. And secondly, putting floor, extra floors are seriously expensive. So you might find that the top floor isn't worthwhile doing investing in it might be it may well be but i think it's going to cost a lot more than thirty-eight thousand to do i might be wrong but in my experience uh, and that's what you hear at the end of day four to listen to our experiences have you um i expect it will be more than that have you thought of the structural elements with regarding to adding another floor have you yeah. had any structural engineers reports done um, yet? i haven't but that's something i definitely will do yeah, the, the, def build, the building is quite they're, they're, they're the solidly built buildings of, of yesteryears and um, thankfully it's a flat roof I don't know yeah I guess that's yeah a good thing and um, but yes I will be looking into a structure in it, there. it's yeah. it's it's relatively light structure you're putting on there so I would yeah. imagine yes. you'll be fine you do like it's like on. putting a hat on really yeah you know. a few bits of wood <laughs> a few bits of wood and you're up you're <laughs> yeah, done and a bit, bit of steel, timber and a bit of steel frame yeah yeah okay so well, I missed a bit with the steel frame, but I anyway, the building costs. <laughs> um, uh, believing the building costs for one side. I mean, this is re relatively textbook in terms of the PD. You get the um, the flat at the back. You can do something on top. Um, I think th one of the things about permitted development is there's a lot you can do, but the, there's a question is how much of it should you do, mm -hmm. and I think the decider is going to be on whether it's viable without doing the second floor. I, I think you're just going to get one flat, even though, uh, because the trouble with the floor plate, it's a very narrow shop. So once it you is, get the it's stairs... It's not too narrow, actually, because there's a, there, there's a wide staircase, very mm. wide office-like staircase going from the ground floor to the first floor, which cuts through, and that's the staircase I want to make smaller and move to the side. Yes. Have you done a scenario with just a flat on the first floor without going in, uh, creating another floor on top? I haven't. Well, just so take just I take the money off it. I can work um, there. Well, it's the GDVs, I don't know, because it's the uh, well, different area. Take the cost already. and the return off, I suppose. Helen will tell you what it is. She's a number cruncher. Well, it's the two bedrooms, so second floor flat, so you'd have to take 120 off. Right. Well, that, that just sounds remove 40 grand from the cost. I have to say, that does sound ambitious for um, knowing the area relatively well. That just sound quite ambitious price-wise for um, a two-bedroom flat in that town, I have to say. That does sound top-end. When I hear the word moving staircases, that concerns me as well because they're expensive to move. There used to be a staircase on the side which right. they blocked off. Okay, so is, is I'm the staircase thinking. actually still there? It's still there and then it just goes Fantastic. to a wall. Fantastic. You see, um, yeah. you're right and I'm wrong. <laughs> Fantastic. Are we ready to start making some decisions, ladies and gentlemen? So you, you're looking for the investor to put in the 171000 to get the whole thing done without, um, without any finance. Is that right? Correct. So yeah. it would be a cash purchase. Yeah. Have you considered the finance angle? I have. I've spoken to my broker. Yep. And she says that she can get me money by um, releasing equity from my residence. What about a bridge on the building? She says she can get me a bridge, um, but not the development uh, funding. Yeah. I, I'm not necessarily saying for you to do it yourself, but if one of the investors were to come in, that would substantially reduce the amount of cash that we would have to put in okay. and potentially make it a lot more attractive. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, look, I think on, on the surface, it looks good. I like the fact that you're on the ball with the recent planning changes, you know, the potential to add um, another floor. I've got quite a lot of experience with on-selling properties around the, nor the Midlands and the north of England. So I could add quite a lot of value with getting rid of it quickly if we wanted to once it was done. The only slight concern I have with the area is it's a small town and in the current economy I think some small towns are going to struggle quite a bit over the next 12 to 18 months with job loss but that's that's my only slight concern you know on the surface you're putting in about 20% um, of the just shy of 20% of the costs 
and my logical brain would say, therefore, you should share in 20% of the profits. Um, so if I was to do it, and we would be exploring other finance options as opposed to me just throwing 170 grand at you, um, I would do it, but I'd be wanting to take 80% of the profit. Well, that's an offer. It's not where we start, it's where we finish, isn't it? So, Ranjan, bit um, of you, isn't it, this? Yes, I mean, I like the deal type. I really do. I like you. Um, I think it, uh, uh, no, I think it's a great deal. It, for me, it's just not the part of the country I just know anything about. And I have a... It's a nice part of the world. I know, I think uh, small towns folk with, yeah. with um, uh, just one or two uh, employment sources or whatever, they just don't give me the comfort right now. For me, it's the area. It's just something I, I'm not sure I'd be able to add any value to. It's probably got an electric car. It can only get to Watford. <laughs> I really like you, Nemi. Thank you. Um, I, really, I really like the pack. I'm still, if I'm entirely honest, a little bit confused about the numbers and exactly what the profit is. And I do share what, what the guys have said. I think there might be a little more costs in there than, than you're anticipating. Also, I think the, the GDV, again, might need a little bit of, um, tweaking. of tweaking, absolutely. I probably would be around kind of Paul's level if I was going to offer. Um, so I think you've got something great on the table. So I'm not sure else what, what I would really add there. Um, so not for me today, but, but great presentation. I love, I love how kind of thorough you've been. And I think it's, yeah, and, and I think you're completely on the right path. So, so keep going. Thank and you. I think you'll really inspire other people to do the same. I think you'd be really fun to work with, Nemi. I think, you know, you've got a great personality, super positive. Mm. I believe in, you know, to become successful in life, it's more about the personality and the positivity, the drive, the ambition, and, and the person ultimately is 95% of that, that success. I'd love to work with you on that basis. On the deal side, it doesn't stack up for me. Um, it's not quite big enough. It's not an area of the country I know anything about. Um, I like to invest um, you know, within an hour, hour and a half of where I'm from, which is the Thames Valley, uh, uh, sort of west of London. Um, so I'm not London-centric like Ranjan, <laughs> but I would say I'm south, southeast-centric, uh, um, uh, just purely from a, a lifestyle point of view, and I know the, the surrounding area is extremely well. I like the site. I like it's got a lot of potential, and I think you know if the GDVs aren't too far off, and you can get that that cost uh, down on the build, yeah, it's got got some legs. So good luck with the deal, um, but it's not for me today. Now I buy all over the UK, always have done. So I don't get nosebleeds. I don't have electric cars, so we're all okay. <laughs> now you've got an offer from Paul. I would love love to compete against him and beat him because I'm competitive. My issue is that you've done a great job as far as you've gone, but I would really have liked to see some bill costs from a builder, you know, an estimate from a builder. I know perhaps time, time constraints and everything else. I'd like to have seen that. I'd like to have seen a letter from an agent, state agent, saying what these properties are worth when they're done really important to have that have a couple of letters from the state agents saying yes if you did it to a reasonable standard they're worth 120 that would give me more confidence at the moment i'm like 90 95 i don't know so i'm going to be cautious if you agree to do a deal with paul he will have benefited from your lack of experience a little bit in as much that not having that information um, having said that it isn't for me today but i think if you were to do it with Paul, you would gain a huge amount of experience. Um, and I think that the next deal you do, you'll be more successful with in terms of you'll get a bigger share of the profit on the next deal because you have learnt so much and you'll, next time you'll present it that little bit better than you have already this time. So you've got one off on the table. What would you like to do? Can I negotiate? Of course you can, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> um, what would you think about 70-30? The, the main things that, that, that I was mentioning before, so far as the contingencies that, that come to mind, are the end sales values and the build cost, especially of the second floor, and whether the second floor can actually happen or not. 
Now, if the second floor costs twice as much, or it can't happen, that impacts your, your profit percentage quite a lot. And if the end values are 100 grand and not 120 grand, that impacts your end values quite a lot. And I think both of those are quite a big possibility. Um, and that's why I've offered what I've offered. <laughs> um, could you meet me halfway? So 25, <laughs> 75, I think that's fair. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. I accept. So, Nami, did we get a deal? <laughs> we did! Yay! <laughs> we did. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How are you feeling? Um, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy, very pleased. I can't wait. Good. So, which angel went? Paul. Brilliant. Okay, he's going to be a great mentor for yeah, you as well. Yeah, I, th I can feel it because he's got so much energy mm -hmm. and knowledge. So I'm, I'm just pleased. Yeah. I'm over the moon. Yogesh, welcome to Property Elevator. It's great to have you here with us. Thank you so much. It's, it's really, really exciting today. Thank you. Good. So tell us a little bit about your pitch and what you're after from the Angels today. Okay, so I've got a office in Crystal Palace, South South London and it's, I'm going to convert it into three flats ideally and uh, the profit should be um, in the order of £200,000 and uh, I'm asking them for £300,000 and after 12 months they'll get their money back and we'll share the £200,000 between us. Right, so a nice 50-50 split of the uh, profit. I might be a bit more generous actually. Oh. I, I'm quite keen on getting their experience and getting them bored so I might do 60-40. Okay. I'd be happy with that. Okay, so we've now got Yogesh coming in to see us, who's quite an experienced developer. He's got a number of properties in London already. This is a ground floor and basement office at the moment that he wants to convert into three flats. Uh, shall we get him in and see what uh, he's got to say? Good afternoon, Yogesh. Thank you very much for coming in to see us. Uh, we're slightly humbled by you because one, you're a doctor. So if anything happens to any of us, we're, we know we're in good hands. You are. Uh, and I like, like to think you're in good hands with us as well. I hope so. Uh, and also you're an experienced developer and investor yourself. So, Correct. you know, once again, uh, to have some of your quality come to see us uh, and, and pitch is, is we're very, very grateful. Yogesh, do you want to just tell us very briefly about yourself because I've said a bit anyway and then the deal and then we can take it from there. My name is Yogesh Patel, as you said. I'm a GP, I'm a doctor. Uh, in Croydon and I've been investing in property deals since 2002. I brought to you a deal, it's uh, an office, um, they're hard to come by uh, nowadays in London but it's an office in a conservation area which I'm going to convert into three flats. It's got a long lease, 125 years uh, but the freehold is available to buy an additional cost if you, if you choose to but the freeholder is happy and consented for all the works I'm going to describe. Now it's an um, 88 metre square office, it was a private investigator uh, office uh, they just closed down the business after 20 years. I know the current owner really, really well and I've got a really good relationship with them. Um, they're happy to let the property go for 450000 which is a ground and a basement at the moment. Using this relationship, they will take 100000 now and they'll take the 350000 when the flats are sold. So less money in the deal. Uh, my planning consultant visited already. I got him to visit on Monday, actually. He thinks this is a class O, general permitted development rights, no problem. It meet the five criteria, he said, there's no problems. I can go into the five, five criteria if you want me to later. Natural light with a, with a light well. Builder said that's no, no problem to build. Each flat will sell for £300,000. I'm sure that's true. I, I've got sold prices of around 325 the build cost is 200,000. I haven't had time to do specifications no, and it's understandable. builder drawings, but I'm pretty sure it's correct. I did get three builds to go in and they gave me an idea, and that's about 2,200 pounds a square metre, which mm -hmm. I think is about right. Yep. You buy for 450, there's 50,000 ciliary costs which detailed in the pack, which I'm actually happy to contribute towards myself. Um, so the total cost in is 700,000 pounds. Total sales, three times 300, 900,000 pounds. So the profit to share between us is 200,000 pound. 12 month project after the planning, um, build and selling them on. So I'm looking for the 100,000 pound deposit that the vendor wants mm -hmm. and the 200,000 pound for the build. I'm happy to split that, 60% uh, you guys, 40% uh, to myself. I'll, I will also be open to offers. Um, I, I will also be paying 10% on any interest on any uh, 
cash that's brought in mm -hmm. but, uh, as well, because I think that's fair. I'm happy if you have as much involvement or little involvement as you want. Obviously, I like your experience and, uh, and expertise on this, but I, I'm happy to manage it all by myself. I've got a team ready to go, planning going next week if you want. I think in summary, love to work with you guys. Uh, I know you have fun with me, we'll make money together. Uh, you'll get 300 grand back in 12 months. You'll get an extra 120 grand check on top. Um, happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I, I don't mind starting. Um, I'm interested in the basement in particular. That's obviously a key part of the development. How many units, how are the three units spread out? Are they So the basement will be one flat and there'll be one flat at the front and one flat at the back on the ground. That's how it on works. On the ground, yeah. yeah, okay. And are you proposing light wells down the side passage and at the rear of the property on the sort of L shape of that? Middle of the alleyway at the back. The alleyway, yeah. Yeah, in there, and that'll be the light well to the basement. Okay, just and one light well. One light well, that's okay. it. And there'll be a common entrance in that area too. Is it a smaller unit in the basement then, uh, one bed? Is it a stu studio or is it a full one bed? Uh, they're probably going to be 30 metres square, so they're probably going to be studios realistically. Yeah. So all uh, three studios, yeah, yeah, okay. And on that point, actually, you picked up on my next question yes. straight away. You've said it's 88 square metres of yes. office. Is that uh, net or gross? Uh, and the reason I'm asking is if you've got three at 90, that obviously adds yep. up to 90. Yep. Three at 30 adds up to 90 yep. square metres, not 88. Co yep, there'll be a rear extension, which my planning ah. consultant says is no problem, probably two or three metres deep at the back. And that, right. that gives you okay. space. Because that's critical for selling these on for finance. Obviously, a lot of mortgage companies won't allow lending under 30 square metres. Hence so the 30 square yep. metres. Okay, That's good you good know your stuff there? Yeah, yep. very good. It's a great pack, by the way. Um, you know, it's got numbers, it's got detail, it's got photos, it's got humour, it's got a bit about you. I really, really like that. So well done. Are you referring to John's book in the humour yeah. pack? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. rude. That's Little just rude. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm always looking at exits. So if you're looking to sell studio, wh what's the kind of the demand for studios in that area? In that triangle, people want to live there and right. th it will fly, right. I'm sure. I, I work very near that area for 10 years. Yeah. I own property in that area. I know the prices. And you say you've been conservative with the 300 yeah. grand yes. price. And, and you think that's, that's a reasonable price for a basement as well? It's a flat in the triangle and um, yes, the answer is yes. What do you expect? How realistic do you think a year is for this entire project? I don't see a problem. Prior approval is 42 days, I believe. And as I said, oh, that can go 56. in. 56. Sorry, apologies. 56 for thank prior you. approval. 56. I thought, it, I thought it was less than that, no? 56. Is it? Unless they've just changed no, it. No, no, no. I haven't double checked. Yeah, so 56 days for that. And I can submit, it can be submitted next week. Uh, so that's a couple of months. During that period, I'll get the building drawings, the structural calculations, specifications with, with the project manager. So the build will start after 56 days. Build time, they told me, is four months, let's say six months. Mm -hmm. And then, so what have you got? That's, is that month eight now? So, so four months to market and sell, complete legally. So that's actual return of funds within 12 months? Yes. Um, and have you factored in anything about, because obviously we're going into a an interesting economic time. Have you factored any in, anything in, looked at any kind of sensitivity analysis on if the market goes down and what that does to the numbers? So uh, I predict a 10% dip. I think that's true. I mean, I'm mean, hoping this will be six months. I think the dip will come after six months. That's what I believe. So I think we will miss that. Um, but if it's a 10% dip, then your, your profit will go down. And then you've got options of whether you want to take the lower profit or whether you want to wait, refinance, pull the money out and take it later. And that we can discuss that if, if the market does crash, yeah. If we have the rental three out, what's the rental? The studio, 1,200. 1,200 a month each? Yeah, each, yes. Um, a lot of the questions I would have asked have just been answered by reading it. So it's hard to come up with any further over and above what everyone else has already asked. Um, I like it. Uh, it's very interestingly, it's, it's pretty similar to what something that I've been looking for with my business partners and, and I th it, it seems to stack up. Obviously subject to the planning, but that doesn't look like it would be a problem. Yeah, like I don't disagree with the rental figure you mentioned. I don't disagree with the um, values. Um, I live about a mile around the corner from here, so oh, I, I, don't, okay. I know the you area know relatively well. Great, that's not helped us, has it? Yeah. <laughs> 
Do you um, want to buy them? And I like how many different <laughs> options you've covered. That, that's, yeah, there's, there's, I don't think there's much to, to add to what you've given, which is a compliment to you. I love it. It's, uh, it's, it's up my street. No, well, not geographically, but it's up my street in terms of the, uh, the type of project. I just want to ask a couple of questions about the basement. So there's an existing basement there. Yes. And um, what's the s do you know what the ceiling height is there? And uh, is it what's it used for? Is it habitable as it, uh, at the moment? Or? I've been in it. The pictures are there. It, it's it's very dry and clean. Um, it, the ceiling will be need to be raised, and that's in the build. Company. So it'll need to be dug. No, no, no. no. There's a lots of height on the ground floor. Oh, you're doing it that way. That's clever. So okay. we'll raise it. So only the only the front part of the building, the office part has a split um, split level. So that bit will be raised. Um, the rest, the back part has enough head height, it's just the front part that doesn't. The basement is under the entire footprint of the ground floor, is it? The basement is not dug out the whole length. The width, yes. But, but it's enough the, for that one flat it that you It definitely you've, 30 um, metres square. Okay. Yeah, it's in the, if there's a scratch with the measurements, then it's definitely, definitely being measured. Have you priced in to tank the basements? No, I'll be honest. Um, the builder's seen it. Mm. and they didn't comment on it and I didn't think of it until they left. And the tanking is probably, I'm guessing, 10, 12 grand, something like that, yeah. I would have thought. For the warranties, 10-year warranties, you'll need that. So I think we can add 10 grand onto your, onto your costs. On the, other, the other issue is um, the builder you're using, sounds like you know the builder. Yes. Uh, has he done lots of other jobs for yes. you? Of this, of this um, yes. he's got enough experience to do it. Definitely. Does he give you a fixed price? He does. He does. Have they got a bit of money behind them? Yeah. So in other words, if they get the price wrong, can they can they get it finished? Yeah, they're on checker trade and they've got accounts there and so on. Yes. And they've done basements before? Uh, he, this particular one is seeing the property. Um, I, I haven't asked him that direct question or seen any basements, I, I, but I you will know, there's a lot do of, so. You know, it, it, yeah. I would always, yes. I, well, you always yes. get two or three prices, I'm sure, anyway, yeah. but I'm just conscious that with the basement there is you know it's a bit more specialist and um and so on john the, the thing with this basement is it's already there it's got light you can see from the picture ranjan i don't care how it's much light it's got but i'm telling you now it's i've done i've done lots of basements and they are a challenge and i don't want to i don't want you to slip up and I, as my partner i don't want to slip up either um i think you said later in, in the document that the vendor's very flexible with a subject to planning offer yes would that extend to subject to planning for the windows for the basement yes and the Excellent. extension obviously. and the extension yeah. yes that tells me you're paying too much for it yeah it's very generous in london that's what tell i know you've got a personal relationship with yeah. me haven't you so that may be it. okay i'm sounding a bit miserable aren't i and i don't mean to <laughs> but normally i'm a very positive person interesting that good news for you because they all know a duck and dive as to who wants to go first i'll go first because i want to ask you a question before i go first yeah um you're asking for Hundred thousand pounds for the deposit. Yes. Why, if if they're prepared to do an, e an exchange with a delayed completion, after you've got planning, why do you need such a big deposit? They want to pay off their deposit. They've got fi finance on it. So they've got what? They've Private got, finance. They have finance on it. Right. Mm. Uh, and they want to pay, get their deposit they've put into the property back, so they can use the money for their own. And what if you don't get planning? Where, where's that money gone then? That money they can't use without your permission. We wouldn't pay the deposit until plannings had been granted. Uh, well, you would, you would exchange on a nominal deposit. You'd want to keep yeah. that deposit as low as possible. Yes. 10% is obviously industry norm. I was trying to negotiate 5% if possible. Okay. So in this deal, you're talking 25 grand, 22 and a half grand. Yeah. Um, and that's tying up as little as money, a uh, little of your money as possible whilst you get that planning, get your builders lined up, get everything lined up. Then potentially you could, you know, do any other sorts of creative finance to get it bought and, and refinanced uh, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, that would be I some basis of... I think it's better to purchase it than it is do the 100 grand... Lease and option. The rest, and then the rest um, upon completion of the flats. Yeah. It's actually, it's all about le uh, leverage, really. Property developing is all about leverage. It's all about borrowing money against an asset in order to make more money. You know, on, on the basis that if you can do a delayed completion with a 5% deposit, we'd need to negotiate that. You know, I think that's a no-brainer of a deal if you could get that. Uh, so a question mark over whether you could get that. So I think that needs to be explored. Are you opening to finding finance yeah, for the rest of course. If we can the, do the it? finance I can do in my name or whatever company name, no problem. Yeah. Sure. No, yeah. okay. Brilliant. Well, I think there's a lot less money in than if you can get that deal. So I'll, I'll offer you all the money that's needed with creative financing at the 10% interest rate. And I'd ask for 65% 
of the deal properly. Okay. Thank you very much. So very close to what you're offering. Yes, thank you very much. Everyone's playing their cards very close <laughs> to their chest, <laughs> aren't they, Yogesh? Right, I'm I think you've done I mean, well I'm here. I'm enjoying I think this. So think you've got us <laughs> eating out of the palm of your hand. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, I mean, I'm looking at it from kind of a return on GDV, or, you know, that, that kind of perspective. So for me, the, the, this deal is 22% return on GDV, 28.5% return on costs with the numbers that we've got so far. My concern, as we've touched on already, is what, what economic environment we're going into. And, and that's where kind of the timing, when I was asking about that and you know, appreciate Nicholas's input, that's where the timing on that is critical. If it can be done in six months, it's a very different proposition to if it can be done in, in a year because of w what we're expecting. 10% drop in the market if it does take a year. I'm down at a uh, return on GDV of 14%. And, and, and that's where I'm kind of um and ah in. So on that basis, with what I'm looking at, I couldn't offer you something better than Nicholas okay. has given you there. So would you offer the same? And I'm also happy to change my profit share if, you know, if the market dips and, you know, you can do an overage or whatever. I'm happy to kind of do that kind of scale if required. So if the market dips and I lose, I get less share. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. Does that apply to me too? <laughs> uh, you already <laughs> offered. <laughs> An another point I'd like to make is I'd be prepared to share with another, another angel investor. That's here. very good to hear. Thank you. I would be open to that too. Thank you very much. I don't share. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I already knew that, John. <laughs> I think you have had a cracking offer from Nicholas. I would structure it slightly differently in as much that if I were you, I would form a joint venture company and... How much money are you going to put? Would you put into the deal? Uh, the fifty thousand I can do. I'll fund the rest. We buy it. We don't mess about with leases and options and Christ knows what else. It's so bloody confusing. We'll buy it, get the work done, yeah. bang them out, cool. get them sold. If you put the fifty in joint venture, I would take sixty percent, and you get forty percent of net profit. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I, th I think I would be at a similar level to uh, Nick. Um, I would be more favouring to offer you that on my own or to share that structure yeah. with, with one other. But I don't want, it's probably too many. It's not, it just Doesn't becomes a little bit of a <laughs> committee. Yeah, uh, understand. It becomes too many. Yeah, um, So that's where I would be at. It's that 10%, it's that, uh, 65 split and all of that sort of stuff. But buy the thing outright. Get main finance on the main thing on the main thing, yeah. and we'd provide the rest. I'd do that with Ranja. Perfect. Nicholas on his own for some reason they don't like you, which is interesting. Nicholas, I like you. I can't understand it. We've got Helen. Helen, who who's decided to to sit out this one. You got me, which is very straightforward as I always am. You know, um, you put in fifty grand. I fund the rest and we go 60-40 on the profit. These two both live in London, one's very local, both very experienced, Karanjan more experienced than Paul in terms of development, but together make a great team, um, and uh, the finance certainly won't be a problem. So, you've got three choices. If you want to have a little, little thing Another in the option, corner I'd of the room. be willing to go to 60 on my own. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit bitchy, just isn't it? Just stuck my knife in your back, Ranjan. <laughs> well, I'd be willing to go to 60 on my well, own. Well, <laughs> and I'd be willing to do it with Ranjan at 60 uh, as well. I don't mind. So but I think 60 is fair. I think you need to make some money out of this. Yeah, that's why I put it down in my proposal. Yeah. You know what? Um, he's got a nice smile. I I'll agree with that. <laughs> 60 and I'll do it with Paul. Okay. Is 60 the best? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think we'd be shooting ourselves in the foot if we came in and offered you better than you've asked for. Okay. <laughs> you never know. But it's worth the ask. I want we to appreciate ask. that. Yeah. Okay. It's worth the ask. So obviously you guys are higher, so it's, it's difficult for me to choose you guys, to be honest. You, you, you two and you are similar level. I hope so you choose not just on the basis of price. But no, on or, no, I Let don't. me tell you why I initially yeah. said I'd go with Rajan rather than Nick, and that's mostly because yeah, I'm based this. in London, and so is Rajan. Yeah, and I, know I want to do something in London. I know Rajan has experience in London, so I think it's a good team given the location. I think, w I think actually we're a great team because you've got someone who knows about finance and property. You've got someone who knows PD. You know, we'll, 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 we'll let them stuff. waffle on, Helen, and then we'll, <laughs> then we'll talk. We'll let them shoot themselves in the foot first. <laughs> I think what, what they've failed to spot yeah. <laughs> is the fact that with Helen and myself as a team, we also have huge expertise in micro studios and studio schemes. We have over 200 units 
Oh, um, we have that as well. We've throughout the Thames Valley. So <laughs> a couple hundred of those. I see opportunity here <laughs> at building maybe four studios. Um, we need to look at the site, work together. But I think there might be some GDV to be had here and then look at onward selling the entire investment rather than individual units, which might be harder in the current market, giving you another solid exit. OK, that's an interesting point. I'm letting my career speak for itself. OK, thank you. But he might retire halfway through. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> if only I could. Uh, I was going to sign, then you mentioned this potential avenue, so now I'm, I'm thinking about that. Um, because obviously if you increase the GDP, we will get more money. Um, if you have that expertise, that's an interesting angle. Uh, Keeping in mind, we can explore that too. Yes. I don't, know, don't, you, <laughs> okay. don't you think we all might do that? <laughs> we'll all start no, no, with But uh, I've had to tell them how to do it, haven't I, Yogesh? That's one. the point. Ranjan, would you be interested in a YouTube channel on this deal? Um, well, of course, I would. <laughs> yeah, I, I like a bit of publicity. Okay. Of course, it will get uh, publicised. Do you? <laughs> no. Oh, really? <laughs> well, in in terms that. of, look, 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 look that's at by least, the, that's least that by the by. I didn't know he was on YouTube. <laughs> Has he got a YouTube channel? Uh, I've never heard of it. I did my first <laughs> commercial to Resi conversion in yeah. 2005. And that was... That and, wasn't and, that long and, ago then, was it? And PD came in in 2013. So I've done it the hard way under planning. When PD came on, it just became a lot easier. So, the, you know, all of that side of it is... is we, of think, course we I do. think it's decision time. That's the one I'm going with you guys. I can't believe that. Well done. Well done. Oh, we can't can't yeah. So, looking by the smile on your face, we've got a deal? Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. So, who did you go for in the end? So, I went with Paul and Manjan. I okay. thought they were the best team and the most experienced, and I think they helped me with future stuff. Yeah. Which is really what I was looking for. And Ranjan's interested in YouTube channels and so am I. Okay. So I'd like to go on some YouTube channels. Did yeah. anybody else try and offer you anything as well or was it just the two? Uh, no, everyone offered me something, every single person. Wow. And I had my pick and they were fighting over me at one point and they were all quite silent in the beginning because I think they wanted to know what other people were going to offer so they could bid against them. Well, that marks the end of series two of Property Elevator. We've had millions of pounds worth of deals happen, ready for some exciting new developments taking place around the UK. That's all we've got time for this series. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. I'm Elizabeth Warburton, and you've been watching Property Elevator. Mm -hmm.